Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about the top deficiencies that are causing your high blood pressure. Now, this is a hugely important conversation because nearly half of all American adults are suffering with high blood pressure. That means that that top number, which is your systolic number, when your heart contracts, is greater than 130, or that bottom number is when you're relaxing, your diastolic number is greater than 80, okay? Nearly half of American adults are suffering high blood pressure. Now, this ties into our health in this way. High blood pressure is known as the silent killer because so many people have it and they live without it and they don't even know that they have it, okay? But here's why it is so detrimental. High blood pressure is tied to the number one killer of all human beings, which is heart attacks and strokes, okay? That is the number one vital, that is the number one metric that leads to your heart attack, your stroke, your aneurysm, and so much more, okay? And so it's hugely important we sort of unravel this because when you look at the number of people being affected with high blood pressure, it is growing, it's expanding every day. It's not just adults anymore, it's not just the elderly. We're seeing children with high blood pressure now as well too, okay? And it's not just with heart. Heart is that it's the issue. It's also with our kidneys as well too. This is one of the ways that we lose our kidney function, okay? And I'm gonna tie that into some of the deficiencies that I'm gonna talk about in just a second. How one of these deficiencies, which is something that is very much tied to your kidney function, is also causing your high blood pressure as well too. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because, as you know, we talk about things from a holistic perspective, but when you go into the conventional or modern medicine setting, they're not necessarily looking at it from you know a holistic perspective. The, essentially, the idea is to treat the symptom, the symptom being the high blood pressure, to lower the high blood pressure. But if you're manipulating the biochemistry to lower the blood pressure, it means that you're not addressing the real cause. The blood pressure isn't the issue, okay? It's like the check engine light in the car. The check engine light isn't the problem. Turning off the check engine light doesn't solve the problem of the check engine light with the oil change, okay? So just because you turn off the check engine light, it doesn't mean that you don't need an oil change anymore. Well, guess what? Just, just because you manipulate the blood pressure, it doesn't mean that you have corrected the cause of what is causing the blood pressure to be high in the first place. And there are a number of things that could cause your blood pressure to be high. It could be stress. It could be a really horrible diet, which is what most people eat here in America. But in many times, what I see is a combination of toxicity and deficiency. And so we're going to focus on the toxicity side of things today. Now, two of those primary things that you are deficient in quite often that I see um, not only now working on a holistic side of things, but even when I was working in the hospital and I would look up people's lab values, they were most likely always deficient in these two particular minerals, okay? Calcium and magnesium, okay? All right, calcium and magnesium, and a close third is potassium. Now, we're gonna focus today a little bit on the calcium and magnesium, and let me explain why in just a second. When you think about those particular minerals, and the reason why I'm, I'm making sure you understand that these are minerals, things that are in your, supposed to be, you know, essentially retrieved through your diet, okay? And so it's important you know when you are deficient, when you're eating food that is deficient, Okay, when you're eating food that is poor, when it comes to nutrition, you're going to be deficient. That's just how it rolls. And when you think about the standard American diet, 70% of it is processed. That means that the, all the minerals and all the fiber have been ripped out of the food if it was at some point a food. Okay, it's important to know and understand that. Process means that it is a process of ripping out all of the fiber, all of the minerals, the vitamins, the key nutrients, the phytonutrients, the antioxidants, all of that is ripped out. And what you see on that box when it says enrich, that is a synthetic version 
of what nature is, okay? So yeah, they may say we put iron in there, but it is not the version that nature would have given us. Hugely important. When you see that they say that it's been enriched with potassium, enriched with calcium, enriched with magnesium, all of these things, when it says enrich, it's saying that it's been enriched because at, at one point it was poor, meaning it had everything ripped out of it, okay? So this is how we end up deficient. Most of the foods that we're eating are deficient in the type of minerals that our bodies will A, recognize, B, absorb, and three, utilize, okay? Hugely important. The other thing that's really important around the conversation around minerals is we need minerals to function, okay? When you don't have these key minerals, your heart could not function properly, okay? And I'm gonna explain how in just a second. But the thing is, most people, when they hear a deficiency like a mineral, calcium, magnesium, you know, potassium, when they hear these deficiencies, they think that they don't, there's no state of an emergency. There's no urgency to correct them. You know, you take a supplement, but again, if that supplement isn't in the right form, your body will not be able to recognize it, it will not be able to absorb it, and will not be able to utilize it. Hugely important. Okay, so you could take supplements out of the wazoo. And what you'll notice is when you take that supplement, if it is a synthetic ver version of the biological form of it, the unfortunate thing is in the beginning, you will manipulate the body so it will think, hey, I got potassium now, it's deficient in that. But at some point, you will notice you'll get tolerant and it won't work anymore, okay? So I wanna start with that because it's hugely important to know and understand that Again, you have to get this from your diet. Anything you take in the supplement form is just that. It is a supplement. It cannot be the foundation. Okay, so if you're trying to correct a deficiency, a supplement is a supplement. It is not the foundation. The foundation is through your nutrition. All right, so let's get into how these deficiencies end up causing you to have, you know, high blood pressure. All right. So let's talk about potassium first. Some of the functions of potassium. Potassium helps to maintain normal um, fluid levels in the body so that you don't get fluid sort of collecting outside of the cells, you know, in certain areas of the body. So it helps to maintain that. It maintains that by balancing with sodium. Okay. So you have what's called a potassium sodium, um, you know, channel. Okay. And so it's constantly balancing. Okay, balancing where your fluid goes, which is hugely important because you think of a balloon, you put too much water or fluid into the balloon, it'll pop. Okay, so potassium is really important for that. Potassium actually actually helps with, um, you know, muscle control or contraction as well too. All right, so when you're deficient in potassium, you're going to have a problem contracting your muscles as well too. And that also helps with maintaining blood pressure as well. It also helps with your nervous system as well too, okay? So if you have a potassium deficiency, you also can have some nervous system issues as well too. What about calcium? Calcium helps, uh, is, is really great for bones and teeth, um, but it's also good for muscle contraction. Now, I'm gonna explain why, because that's one of the primary things that potassium does as it um, pertains to maintaining your blood pressure. But it also carries messages from your brain throughout your nervous system to the rest of the body as well too. Okay, so if you're one of those people, you're in the gym trying to get those muscles to fire and they just won't fire the way that they need to, it's hugely important to understand that you could potentially have a calcium deficiency. So when you have this calcium deficiency, quite often all you'll hear is, you know, you'll have a potential issue with uh, your bones being brittle. You know, but it's not, these minerals don't have just one function. It's hugely important you know and understand that. And I think what's also important to understand about calcium is this. Um, a lot of people who get high blood pressure will get a drug known as uh, a calcium channel blocker, like Norvaz, for instance. And one of the things that Norvaz does is it blocks calcium from going inside of the cells of the heart in heart tissues or cells and also the blood vessels. Now, why is that important? 
a calcium channel blocker blocking, you know, calcium going inside of the cell. Because what does that do? By blocking it, it, uh, it causes the muscles of the heart and the blood vessels to contract more strongly. Okay. So whereas you would have had a problem pushing, you know, this blood through a particular blood vessel, now you got a stronger contraction. It's done more forcefully. Okay. So that's one of the primary you know, functions of calcium. What about magnesium? Magnesium is really great for athletes for energy. Okay. So that's one of the things that when I work with athletes, I'm always telling them, you got to make sure you do not have a magnesium deficiency because your energy is, level is going to be uh, really low. Okay. And 80% of the population is actually deficient in magnesium. It also helps to make certain proteins. It helps uh, make glutathione, which is an antioxidant used for detoxification. And it also helps calcium to become absorbed into the bone. So if you have a magnesium deficiency, let's say you weren't deficient in calcium, but you had enough calcium in your body, but not enough magnesium. Well, then you may have a lot of free calcium floating around in the blood instead of going inside of the bones and the teeth where 99% of all calcium resides. Okay, so you can see how all of these these three different minerals work together. Now, how does that play a role in your blood pressure? All right. Now, when you think blood pressure, blood, okay? So the focal thing is the blood, and then there's pressure. Where's the pressure coming from? The pressure is coming from the blood vessel. Why is there pressure in the blood vessel? There could be a number of reasons, but one of the issues could be flow, okay? And if the, the let's say for instance, the blood isn't being you know, push through the blood vessels in a seamless way like it needs to be, it could be because you have a deficient, deficiency in both calcium and magnesium. Let me explain why. According to the functions that we just talked about, calcium contracts and guess what? Magnesium relaxes. Okay. Contract, relax. Contract, relax. Okay. Contract, relax, contract, relax. Now, the reason why I'm showing you that is this. When you think about the blood vessels, I mean, we have thousands of miles of blood vessels inside of our bodies. That blood has to travel through seconds upon seconds upon seconds because every inch of our body needs to be nourished, okay, with blood, all right? If we don't get blood to a certain area, you know, that tissue begins to die, okay? Now, here's the issue. There's parts of the body that have a pump. You know, the pump we all know as the heart. That's part of the pumping system, but it's also the lungs too. The lungs is also pumping blood out as well too. All right, our kidneys are also filtering blood. Now, here's what ha what's happening and what causes the issue with blood pressure around these three minerals, okay? Calcium is contracting. Magnesium is relaxing. Okay, so think about that with the blood supply as it's flowing through, it has to have both calcium and magnesium. The calcium is contracting, pushing the blood forward. The magnesium is relaxing, allowing the blood to go through. So if you have a magnesium deficiency, all you're going to get is the contraction. The more contraction you have, the more pressure you're going to have. All right. If you, all you have is magnesium relaxation, now the blood isn't forced through because it doesn't have the contraction behind it. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's hugely important to know that in the body, we think about things individually. In nutrition, we think about things in the individual compartments, but everything is working together in a sink, uh, like almost in this orchestra, okay? So I'm going to give you some sources, some major sources, plant-based sources of all three of these minerals so that you can start incorporating them into your diet. And as a result, you can start to correct the foundation of these deficiencies. OK, so let's start with calcium. One of the great sources of calcium could be a green leafy vegetable like kale. You know, kale, you get about 305 milligrams of calcium. Okay. And that's about for three and a half cups. So about the size of a salad. All right. Turnip greens. Okay. About 300 milligrams. And that's about one and a half cups. So half the size of the kale. Okay. You get about 300 mil milligrams. 
You also have seaweed and seaweed is a really great sort of, um, it is it, it's literally a hack. And the reason why is because seaweed has 10 times the amount of calcium that they told us milk has. Okay. And the other really important thing about seaweed is this calcium is the calcium in seaweed is more bioavailable than most other sources of calcium. Okay. And what does that mean? That means that the calcium that you will find in seaweed absorbs at a higher rate compared to other sources of calcium. Okay. So if you can get more to absorb, that means that you need less. Okay. So seaweed, that's a great hack. You guys know that I sell the Irish sea, Irish sea moss on my website. You can check that out. But again, you have to get this seaweed in your diet. Your sea vegetables, that's the part of the game that everybody skips over, okay? But you got to get that part in your diet, all right? The other great source is going to be sesame seeds. Sesame seeds have about 88 milligrams, I believe, per tablespoon, okay? And the other thing is if you do about 100 grams of um um, you know, sesame seed in the form of like tahini, which is essentially like crushed up sesame seeds. You do about 100 grams, you're going to get 975 milligrams of calcium. Okay, so hugely important. Those are your calcium sources. Let's talk about some potassium sources. And I'm going to mention to you the potassium sources that are much more than bananas, because when people think about potassium, the first thing they think about is bananas. Okay, so avocados. A half of an avocado, you're going to get about 345 um, milligrams of potassium. Okay, so hugely important. If you eat a whole one, you're going to get around about 700. All right, so avocados are great. And the beautiful thing about this is if you take a supplement, you're only getting the, the potassium. You take this avocado, you're getting everything else with it, the fiber and the other nutrients. Okay, hugely important. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe has about 437 milligrams of potassium. Pomegranate has about 600 milligrams of potassium. You also have acorn squash. That's a really good one as well, too. And you're going to get about 896 milligrams from there. Swiss chard, about 960 milligrams. So you can start adding that green leafy vegetable to your salad. Also, coconut water, which is by far my favorite. In one cup, you're going to get about 600 milligrams. Most days I'm drinking seven to eight cups. <laughs> so you're getting 600 milligrams in one cup. So drink coconut water instead of, if you're not going to drink water, drink coconut water. Okay. And then dried apricots. You're going to get somewhere around 756 milligrams and a half a cup of dried apricots. Okay. So those are your potassium sources. What about magnesium? The first one I'm going to start with, avocados. Now, what I want you to think about is the first one I gave you for potassium was avocados. And now I'm telling you that you're going to get a great source of magnesium from avocados as well, too. This is why I'm saying it's so important to eat the right foods that you're not only eating it for one purpose. You're eating it for a multitude of purposes to cover many deficiencies. So with avocados, you get about 58 milligrams of magnesium, okay? Green leafy vegetables. Um, the beautiful thing about green leafy vegetables is this. When you compare, I, I do a lot of green juices and you'll notice that they're green when you make a green juice because I, everything I put it in is green. Everything from the cucumber to the, the herb that I put in, put in there to the different forms of green leafy vegetables the dandelion leaves, the Swiss chard, the kale, etc., And so it comes out this green. What makes it green, all right? Well, the only difference between what I call chlorophyll or plant blood that makes it green and our blood is what's at the center of the cell, okay? At the center of our cell is iron and hemoglobin. At the center of plant blood is magnesium okay so it's hugely important you got to get this green leafy vegetables in your diet that's why they're so important because what's at the center of the cell of leafy green vegetables is magnesium so they're a great source another great source that most people don't talk about is hemp seed you're going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand one hundred and twenty milligrams in one cup okay a thousand 
120 milligrams in one cup if you use hemp seeds. Okay, so you can sprinkle some in your smoothie. You can put some on your salad. Just throughout the day, you're just putting in your quinoa, wherever. But you literally can get over a thousand milligrams of magnesium by just incorporating hemp seeds in your diet. And the last one I'll give you is Brazil nuts and you get about 500 milligrams from the Brazil nuts. So if you wanna correct these deficiencies, start there, that's the most important thing. I always tell people, you know, the sort of the, the, the health equation or prescription for really healing your, your body is you gotta get rid of toxicity and you got to correct deficiency. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.